In order to multiply radicals, we first need to make sure that the index is the same, which means both radicals are square roots or cube roots or fourth roots and so on. If they are, then we find their product by multiplying the coefficients together and then multiplying the numbers underneath the radicals together called the radicands. And then once we do this, we want to simplify if possible. So for square root two times square root eight, since they're both square roots, this is going to be equal to the square root of two times eight. And since two times eight is equal to sixteen, we have the square root of sixteen. And since sixteen is a perfect square, this simplifies to four. Again, this is equal to four because sixteen is a perfect square because it's equal to four times four. But in many cases, this product will not be a perfect square. For square root five times square root thirty-five, again, because they're both square roots, this is equal to the square root of five times thirty-five. And there's no real reason to multiply these together if we know we're going to be looking at the prime factorization to simplify this. What I mean by that is since thirty-five is equal to five times seven, we could write this as the square root of five times five times seven. In this form, it makes it much easier to simplify this. We can see we have a perfect square factor here of twenty-five, so this will simplify. So this is going to be equal to one factor of five times the square root of seven. So again, there's no reason to find this product just to break it down into its prime factors. Next we have two square root fourteen times three square root twenty-one. They're both square roots, so we'll start by multiplying the coefficients. Two times three is equal to six, and then we're going to have the square root of fourteen times twenty-one. And again, there's no reason to find this product if we're going to break it down into its prime factors to simplify the square root. Fourteen is equal to two times seven, and twenty-one is equal to three times seven. Therefore, this product will contain all of these prime factors. So we can write this as six times the square root of, we'll have one factor of two, one factor of three, and two factors of seven. So in this form, we can see here's a perfect square factor, which we'll simplify. So we'll have six times one factor of seven, times the square root of two times three, which is six, and six times seven is equal to forty-two, so we have forty-two times the square root of six. And we'll look at several more examples in the next few videos.